Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Waterwise and welcome back to From the Depths. And welcome back indeed to a Let's Build. I have not done one of these in a while and I was wondering what on earth I should record for the channel uh, the other day. And was floundering around looking at my to-do looking at my to-do list and thinking, man, I don't feel like doing any of these. And so then I thought, like, you know what gets your FTD mojo back? Just shutting up for a second and building something and worrying about talking later. So here we are, and as you've probably already guessed from the title, I decided to get some practice in. Uh, what you're witnessing here is me in the From the Depths Dojo, which is basically just the designer, let's face it, and trying my hand at making a more realistic kind of hull, which I generally don't do. I am infamous as the canoe guy, and... Yeah, I don't generally go for, like, a real-life inspired hulls, uh, but every so often it's good to dip your toe in, if only to appreciate uh, how much your default hull uh, works so well for you. Like, everyone has a different kind of default, uh, if they've played From the Depths for long enough. Mine is a canoe, basically, because it makes me happy to look at, and it's just... I'm just used to dealing with uh, whatever problems... Um, uh, result from using that hull. And yeah, so what uh, I'm doing here, I basically just looked up World War II Destroyer and found a 3D model of a T-22 uh, German Destroyer. Hang on, I'm gonna look up the Wikipedia. I didn't look up anything about it, by the way. Um, I just um, I just found the 3D model, thought, yep, that'll do, and then away we go. And let's just go here, T-22 Destroyer, T-22 Destroyer. Okay, German Torpedo Boat T-22. Alright, so it's a torpedo boat, not a destroyer. My bad. Um, but yeah, that's the rough thing that's inspired this. It's not even close to perfect, because there's a lot of problems with trying to make a realistic ship hull in From the Depths, because... Like, the smallest block you can place is one cubic meter. There is a lot of stuff on a T-22 torpedo boat, uh, just for example, that is um, not one cubic meter, as in most of the stuff. So I have quite a challenge trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing here. And whenever you see me pause on the recording, which is sped up uh, times two, by the way, post-commentary, very convenient. Uh, it is because I am quite literally looking over at my other monitor to see what the hell the thing actually looks like. Or at least what the 3D model looks like. I don't think it's that perfect to 3D model. It's like, um, it's a little bit, uh, what do you call it? It's a little bit, how do you say this? It's a little bit polygonal in places, but you know what? Beggars can't be choosers and I'm a beggar and so I had no choice. Actually, I did. So, I don't know, I'm making excuses, I guess. The bow is the hardest part, uh, by the way, which is why I started with it while I was still bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and full of energy. And so, yeah, it just goes from there, and you, I just changed my mind a lot. This is the kind of build, because I'm not so familiar or practiced with this hull, um, I just end up doing a thing, changing my mind, and then redoing it. And yeah, if you want to see a live version of this, there is an old stream VOD on the channel uh, where I tried to build a replica of the USS Alaska, which is a... Uh, what was that? That was a... I think that was a cruiser. A uh, United States Navy cruiser in World War II. Slash early Cold War, I guess. And that was a real challenge. I think it was like three streams, so something like six hours it took for me to build that bloody thing. And the end result was not particularly uh, combat capable because of just the shape of it was all kind of just wrong. Um, but that is part of the problem with making stuff um, replica craft and uh, from the depths. Um, if you try and build it to scale, which is kind of what I'm what I attempt here, kind of sort of not really. Um, you're gonna end up with real problems with, well, you're gonna end up problems with internal volume, so you can't stuff as much uh, fun and activities inside it. You're gonna run into problems with armoring, because, again, the thing is probably gonna be quite narrow. And you're also gonna run into severe problems with buoyancy, because, um, real-life ships and from-the-depth ships uh, have different physics to play with. From-the-depth physics is 
quite radically different uh, from uh, real life. And again, the smallest size of block you can place in front of the depths is one cubic meter. Uh, which means that uh, the walls and, like, the deck, well, the hull in general, just every part of it is just so much more thicker and so much more massive uh, than the real life equivalent would be which means it is proportionally heavier even with lower gravity and much denser water so you'll see that once i've actually like hammered out this hull right now i'm just trying to wrap my tiny brain around how the bow was meant to be um if you look up a 3d model of a t22 uh, a torpedo boat you'll see that I kind of missed the mark on the on the bow I actually missed the mark on a lot of things the deck uh, kind of swoops upward uh, this is not the bow this is the stern sorry um, talking about the bow the deck kind of sweeps up and so the uh, the bow the the upper part of the bow is higher than a lot of the the, the rest of the deck behind it I completely whiff on that so please uh, forgive me and, by the way, yes, I know this is a World War II German ship, it's, um, how do you say, uh, the bad guys, like, I wasn't being too fussy this time, I was just like, right, I just want a 3D model of a ship, of not too big a ship, because definitely not up to building a battleship today, thank you very please. Uh, so, uh, I'm just gonna read out the front part of the Wikipedia page for a German torpedo boat T-22. Um, the German torpedo boat T-22 was one of 15 Type 39 torpedo boats built for the Kriegsmarine during World War II. Completed in early 1942, the ship was transferred to France later that year where she escorted blockade runners and Axis submarines through the Bay of Biscay. T-22 also laid minefields in the English Channel in mid-1943. She participated in the Battle of sept I think that's how you pronounce it, where she crippled a British destroyer and the Battle of the Bay of Biscay later that year. After returning to Germany in early 1944, T-22 struck a pair of mines in Narva Bay in August and blew up, with the loss of 143 men. So this is not a particularly big ship, by the way. Um, she's about... Displacement was... Well, standard displacement was about 1,294 tons. Uh, length, 102.5 meters. Beam, 10 meters. Draft, 3.2 meters. I've forgotten what draft means in terms of ships, but I'm not going to look it up. Okay. Royalty ho. So that's the historical background of the hull that's in, that's I'm working off here. It's not... It is a long way from perfect. And at this point, I try and get ahead of myself and try and put deco uh, on this thing. Don't... You don't want to do that. Save the decoration for last. And I have real trouble here because I'm trying to figure out, like, which option I should be using here to adjust the bloody thing. Uh, this thing's holding the uh, propellers in place uh, on ships. I don't know what they're called, uh, but they're much thinner than the one meter by one meter blocks that uh, From the Depths has us used. So, yeah, I was really missing the Mega Slopes pack um, during this whole thing. <sighs> I was really missing it. But anyway, at least the rudders look somewhat accurate. Ah, water is delicious. It tastes like water. So anyway, uh, I wanted to kind of talk about, actually, like, um, the problems of trying to build a ship in From the Depths, like, working from real-life principles, uh, or rather from real-life physics, because a lot of the principles are the same, but you have to adjust for uh, the mass of the material you use and the different physics, like the air being like water, the water being like really dense soup, and the gravity being kind of a suggestion more than anything else, and drag still happening in space. So, yeah, part of the problem with uh, this is that, like, a tall craft has a lot of problems, like, staying stable in From the Depths, simply because, well, I don't know, it just kind of does. A mixture of light gravity and dense water means that the thing is quite likely to roll, I'm not sure how real-life ships avoid doing that. I think it's because they're more dense in the lower parts of the hull, and also they um, have ballast tanks, which uh, can have water pumped in and out of them in order to maintain uh, a proper orientation uh, with, like, you know, so they stay upright. 
Uh, from the depths, that's a little bit harder to do. I could have put a wet space in here, but um, I did not for some reason. It did not occur to me at the time. Wet spaces are a good idea, by the way. It's a convenient way to just get um, ballast uh, without making your craft too heavy. Um, really, I should have done that. I end up using a lot of alloy in this thing, which is um, possibly not um, thematically appropriate for a World War II inspired vet. Excuse me, for a World War II inspired vessel, but you know, that's that's how that's how it goes really. And this is the point where I'm like, oh damn it. The um T22 has a quite a flat uh, side, by the way. It doesn't curve that much. Um a lot of other ships, uh, real life ships, are very curvy uh, on the hull, or so it looks like. You look at like battleships, and they've got like a real bulge on the sides. Like, especially if they've got a torpedo bulge. That's um that's a noticeable bulginess. And something that occurred to me, you don't see it in this footage, but it occurred to me while I was building this, is like, hmm. Oh, that's another problem with this, is like, um, real life ships, because real life water is, provides considerably less resistant than From the Depths water does, or should I say the kind of gel goop that uh, From the Depths water is, um, you only, you don't need that many propellers, like just two on the back and you're all golden and you can actually frickin, you know, steer. And rudders don't need to exert as much force in real life because, you know, less resistance and all that. Um, only stick in two propellers, even if they're like steam propellers on something in From the Depths, uh, is an excellent way to make a very slow vessel. And uh, one of my New Year's resolutions for From the Depths is never make anything that is... Uh, not got a maximum speed of at least 40 meters per second. That is my goal, uh, because that is the uh, speed in which things start dodging cram cannons reliably. It's when they can start uh, outpacing slower torpedoes. It's just a it's just a nice convenient minimum speed, and yeah. So that that's the New Year's resolution, and part of the ways I'm thinking ahead of time because I do kind of want to finish this hull and make it a complete ship. Maybe not a complete, complete ship. I won't bother putting, like, uh, active defenses on it or something like that. Like, keep it roughly World War II level of technology, apart from all the at for, apart from all the alloy, I guess. Although, aluminium was a thing back then, so I guess it's not that anachronistic. Um, but anyway, uh, one of the things I want to do... Uh, well, I want to finish it. And one of the things I want to do is I want to hide propellers in the lower hull. Sneaky, sneaky. So, the replica builders... Uh, that part of the From the Depths community has, um, over the years, are very cunning in using uh, sometimes exploits, sometimes cheesy things, but other times just cleverly hiding things uh, inside the craft uh, to kind of make it, like, perform in a similar way to the real-life version uh, while still looking like the real-life version, because physics is a pain in the butt in From the Depths. So you can see here... Because this thing's so tall, and because it has a metal deck, uh, by the way, uh, it has a metal deck because uh, the uh, T-22 appears to have a metallic deck, apart from uh, some bits on the superstructure. That's not my first choice of deck. I would have made it wood or reinforced wood. And, um, yeah, that probably would have been a smarter thing to do, but you know what? I was working off reference. And you've got to test things, you know? You've got to try things, like... You gotta try things out that you don't usually do, and I try and do that fairly often. And usually it fails, and then people look at my videos, shake their head, and go say like, Oh, that guy doesn't know what he's doing. Which is correct. When I fail miserably like that, it is because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying something I don't usually do. So you gotta, you gotta. I, anyone who doesn't usually make uh, realistic vehicles, or real, well, what's the replica v uh, vehicles, I guess. I urge you to... To give it a go, if only so you understand the kind of nonsense that uh, replica builders have to uh, have to deal with. And to everyone who does make replica vehicles, or purely aesthetic vehicles in general, try... I mean, they do. I'm almost certain a lot of them do that as well. Um, try making something that is not inspired by real life and see how it is. Um, you might be surprised at what you find out. Um, yeah, so this is a lot of beams. I'm not sure why I did this like I have a problem uh, when I try and make something for funsies or for aesthetic reasons and this is 
I don't think this counts as, as, as an aesthetic build. It's not super... It's not super aesthetically pleasing, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, I have a problem with that in that... Uh, I still, like, build in a somewhat meta-ish way, I guess? Which is why there's all these beam slopes in here. Uh, beam slopes are wonderful, wonderful uh, pieces of armor. Uh, they're light, they're half the cost and half the weight uh, of regular beams, and it's a little uh, air gap filler. So yeah, just if you're in, like, my hull armor uses this kind of stuff all the time, it's really good. And depending on what you're trying to accomplish, you can use different materials for it. And yeah, it's jolly good. Oh, so, so what I'm doing here is like, right, I don't feel like making the turret just yet, so what I'm going to do instead is just block in roughly where it is with wooden blocks. Uh, that's a handy thing to do if you're trying to think ahead, because making a APS turret is a whole task in itself in From the Depth, so yeah. So we've got a 5x5 five five space in there. And, spoiler alert, the other turret wells are only 3x3, three three, but that's okay, because all I do is that uh, this front one is armored, because I re reasoned, like, well, if it's in the front, and if it's uh, closing in on an enemy, it's likely to get uh, shot at first, right? And the, r the rear ones do not have turret armor, I know, it's uh, very out of character for me, I usually always do that. Uh, but that's just so, like, I can stick the same gun... Uh, well, basically the same gun twice uh, in the whole thing. This is where I'm like, all right, let's. We have to be clever here because uh, we're not using alloy on the outside. So what can you do instead? What you do instead is you use slopes. So if you still want, like, and this can be for aesthetics or maybe a self-imposed challenge or what have you. Um, if you want a superstructure that is not of light materials, not wood or alloy, something like that, and you're not particularly fussed about it being durable, you can use slopes instead, because then you just arrange them so that they're only really visible from one angle. And this is me, uh, what are you doing, mate? What are you doing? So this is me thinking like, all right, 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 right. So the wooden deck, I need to do something different here. This is where I also kind of throws me off, because um, if you actually look I should probably post a link to the 3D model I was using. It's on Sketchfab, you can find it if you look for it. But I should post the link anyway, so you don't have to look for it very hard. Um, but anyway, so you'll notice that, um, weirdly enough, I end up... The hull I've made here is not long enough for what I was trying to do, for all the bits and bobs that uh, this ship has. Uh, which is annoying. It has quite a fair amount of stuff on it, actually. It's, like, covered in little anti-aircraft guns. It's got, like, three turrets. But four, actually. This thing doesn't quite manage that. And I think that part of the problem is, is that, um... The superstructure's too big. Like, I'm just roughly eyeballing it. Really, you should take a... If you're really serious about getting the exact measurements right, as the replica builders do, you take a frickin' tape measure. Like, or, you know, figuratively take a tape measure to the thing and think like, Alright, we're gonna do a lot of math now, but that requires forethought and engineering. And I'm not good at that. I just thought to myself, you know what, I need to, I should record something, and this is it. And hold your nose, jump in. And sometimes that gets good results, and uh, sometimes it doesn't. I am looking at that, uh, the uh, bow of the ship and thinking, you know what, that's not bad. It's not brilliant. Um, probably gonna have to do some uh, deco on that because, whoo boy, the replica builders, they love decorations. It makes their lives so much easier. It's like, not even funny. It's not funny, but it is heartwarming just how much, um, how much uh, more, how much, well, it doesn't save them time really, but it does get, uh, the end result does look more like the thing that they're working off of, so... Yeah, like, honestly, the whole decorations mechanic, which has not been in From the Depths the whole time, uh, by the way. Like, for the, for those young kids that are watching this, that weren't around in the days before we had decorations, I tell you what, we had to do things the hard way back in my day. It's why my ships used to be even uglier than they are now. It's because you couldn't just hit Control x on something and make it pretty just by uh, sliding some sliders around. You had to actually uh, compromise 
the things. Where am I? <laughs> <coughs> that voice is not actually fun to do. Hmm. I'm trying to remember now if that notch in the bow, by the way, uh, is where the anchor chains are meant to be. I don't remember if I keep those. I hope I do. This is the point where I look at this little craft and think, oh, bollocks. Oh, bollocks to heck. I... this is... this... Th this thing's not long enough. It is the right length, but it's not long enough for all the fun and activities I need to put on here. I should have just put simple weapons on this and made the, you know, the superstructure considerably smaller. I am proud of that smokestack, though. That is a good smokestack. That thing makes me happy. That thing makes me so happy. And see, here's the thing. I'm looking at this smokestack, which currently doesn't have smoke on it, by the way. Uh, and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to steal that for later use. I am absolutely going to do that. And also using beams like this, because this is the superstructure. We don't care if that gets blown up. Um, that's just a shell for the purposes of aesthetics. Aesthetics said with a lisp. Ah, wow, that tickled my lips. Blerg. And there's our super structure, which is like mostly structure and not a hell of amount of super. And here's another thing that the replica builders probably are uh, quite happy with is uh, slopes. Slopes, baby, slopes. And yeah, that's just me making sure the thing is actually attached. Uh, forgetting where the slopes are, and oh no, this is where, this is where you dang kids, like, back in the day, if we wanted to put these metal plates on here, we didn't have deco, we were screwed, we'd just have to compromise, we'd have to put on our big boy and big girl and big gender non-specific pants, and just have to live with uh, that particular patch that just wasn't quite right. Where's my medication? <laughs> Apologies to all older people um, watching this. Pretty sure you appreciate Deco just as much as the young people do. Ah, boy. I have successfully alienated all age groups. I have alienated everyone younger than me, everyone older than me, and everyone who's played from the lips less than me. And I'm not sure who's left. I guess the only demographic uh, left is uh, the people exactly my age, which is 32, by the way. I know. I don't feel 32. Feels weird. Um, who are exactly 32 and have played exactly 5,000-ish hours. I like how I say exactly and then I say ish, so it's like exactly 5,000 hours. Ish. Kind of. Sort of. Not really. I lied. <laughs> Not exactly at all. That sums up my building style in From the Depths um, quite well. So, this is not looking like the T-22 uh, at all, uh, which sounds more like a tank designation than anything else. Here's the problem with military designations for anything. There's only so many letters, and there's only so many numbers. Actually, there's... Never mind, I take that back. There's infinite numbers, but they start to get rather silly after a while. Can you imagine, uh, like, a T, uh, 2 billion and 3, for instance? That's like, that's too many numbers. It's too many. You just gotta, you know... It's why, like, uh, for... What is that thing called? It's like the, uh... The most modern German tank development? Hang on, let me look this up. Uh... Hang on. Modern Panther Tank. So, the Panther K of 51. Okay, so that thing is under development. But here's the thing. The Germans already had a tank called the Panther back in ye old World War II. So now they've got another one. And if I was a superstitious person, I'd say it's because they see World War Three on the horizon and are like, you know what? Uh, the Panther was really good in World War II. So what could possibly go wrong uh, with um, uh, having a panther again? It's good luck. Big cats are good luck in Germany. They're not good luck in Germany. That's a weird thing to say. But now that I've said that, maybe some Germans will come to believe that. If you are a German watching this, do say whether you think naming things after big cats brings you luck. Come to think of it, given that German lost World War II, maybe not. Maybe I'm talking completely out of my hat, 
and the orifice on the uh, opposite end from the hat. So maybe I should move on and talk about something else. Let's talk about air pumps. I don't generally use air pumps that much, but if you build something like this, which is tall and made mostly of metal and it doesn't have a very buoyant deck, you kind of need them. In fact, I was reading Wikipedia so I didn't see it. Oh, lots of lead. Oh dear. And this is the problem. In order to balance the thing correctly, you need to put heavy blocks in the bottom, which makes it heavier, which makes it not float well. Which makes me sad on the inside. And also the outside. It's just generally sad. Um, hell was I talking about? So, wow, I just, I threw myself for a loop there. So we got problems here. This thing is a uh, roly-poly. Um, oh yeah, right. So what I end up doing here, and well, there's more lead to start off with. There we go. She's floating, basically. And what I end up doing, I think I do this after I build the turrets, is I put helium pumps in the superstructure. Which is a risk, by the way, because that superstructure is not very well protected. I place the bloody turret thing sideways. Um, because, yeah, holes can get poked in it quite easily. And in this case, uh, the top of this turret is actually armored in alloy, not metal, because I am desperately trying to make this thing not too top-heavy so it doesn't do roly-poly in the waves and get its tummy shot at. That is the technical military language. And that's this is the point where they... The shortcut for, like, um, centerline uh, mirror mode, by the way, is Alt-N. And it is a great, actually, great way to tell if you're building your ship the wrong way. People have gotten on my case in the past saying, like, how can you possibly forget where your ship is? There's, like, you see it right there on screen. There's literally a thing saying front. When you are, like, you know, up a ship's butt, real deep, there's blocks in the way of that thing. And a lot of the time, especially if you're placing beams, the block is obscuring uh, the, you know, the the arrow that is showing it. And a lot of the time, I'm not even looking at that, I'm looking at the blocks I'm placing. So what I'm saying is, is that I don't have much excuse, but I do have reasons for why I lose track of which end is the front. Not helped by the fact that uh, my canoe addiction means that my craft tend to have the bow and stern be exactly the same, which is a problem for me. It's a personal problem, and I must live with it, but yes. Also, I'm trying to experiment here with like actually putting slopes in me turrets, because that's a good idea. If I really wanted to be sensible, these would be heavy armor slopes, because they're nice uh, volume, volume efficient blocks, which are super tough, and they're just very convenient like that. This is not going to be a prize winning turret. This turret is actually going to uh, have a bit of a weakness actually because I looked at that thought, nah, it doesn't look right. It doesn't quite look like the thing. Uh, in fact, these turrets don't end up looking much like the um, the real deal at all because it's like uh, dual guns on the T-22. Uh, these are not, or at least they aren't. I just end up, I think I just forget to check. Um, and those barrels look too long, so that's a bit of an issue. Uh, what I end up doing is just a single barrel 120mm. 120mm is a good gauge. Like, you can do all kinds of fun things with that gauge. And you can see the ship is still rolling, and much to my shame, I'm probably going to need to put roll props on this, and I might even need to put up props on it. Which uh, offends me deep down inside my canoe building soul. But yeah, assuming I have one. What do you do to get a soul again? I forget. What side quest do you need to do in life in order to get a soul? Pretty sure, like, we aren't born with one. Like, I would have noticed by now. I don't know. That's a weird thing to say in a boat building video, but, um... Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure, I, like, at some point my uh, soul got swapped with a canoe at some point. It's possibly the origin of my curse. My curse! It's not even like the canoes I make are particularly good. I've seen good canoes. I've seen like, whoa. Oh man. Oh, here's a here's a thought to start a fight in the comment section or uh, hopefully a civilized discussion. Does a Viking longboat count as a canoe? Like, what? hang on, I'm actually gonna settle this. What is the definition of a canoe? Hang on, let's take a drink back first. Mm. Ah, yummy. Water is good. It's good for you. Canoe. 
definition. Okay, so according to the Oxford Dictionary, uh, a light, narrow boat with pointed ends and no keel, propelled with a paddle or paddles. Alright, so by that definition, I've not built a single canoe, or maybe I have built the odd canoe in From the Depths. Oh, this is the bit where I stripped the armor off to make it smaller, because I'm cunning and apparently a damn hypocrite, because I say always armor your turrets, it's sensible. It's also pure autoloader, by the way, because I'm like, eh, screw it. This is like, with no ejectors, this is probably the best way to make it explosion proof. Also, we're gonna have a little barbette on this rear one. That's not what the T22 uh, looks like, but we're starting. At some point in this building process, I was like, screw it. If it looks vaguely uh, analogous to a real life vessel, then I will be happy. Uh, anyway, so. If we're defining canoe as a light, narrow boat with pointed ends and no keel, propelled with a paddle or paddles, I have experimented with spin block oars before, uh, which would actually make a canoe, uh, but the whole light, light, nope, I've made some monster craft, um, which people refer to as canoes, but they're definitely not light, narrow, yep, uh, boat, debatable, pointed ends, yes, no keel, uh, yep, uh, propelled with a paddle or paddles, nope. Clearly, I need to, in order to, um, Properly become a canoe addict. I need to put paddles on literally all my craft which are canoe shaped So there we go. This is like roughly like got it I wanted to do about an hour on this so like sped up times two that would get us to half hour and half an hour is a good length For a video it is a comfortable length to ramble in it is a comfortable length to watch I am trying to not make my videos like an hour long or more apart from stream VODs because that's part of the territory and whoopsie daisy I didn't uh, do the weapon groups properly but yeah so last second stuff just setting the weapon groups setting the uh, firing groups and this actually does kind of okay it's okay-ish this this thing isn't gonna win any prizes for anything even when it's finished but, um, you can see there the damage numbers are kind of okay. I forget when I made the shells, but they're basically just, you know, they're, they're high explosive shells, but with an armor piercing tip. Um, not amazing. There, there you go. There's what they look like. And this is the point where I realize, oh, bollocks, they don't have maximum uh, muzzle velocity, so I need to lengthen the barrels. There's another problem um, with From the Depths. In order to get decent accuracy and uh, propellant burn, uh, the barrels are delicious noodles. And this is a... So this is quite risky testing. I don't have an AI, so I can't set the thing on god mode. But, like, you know, I figured it would be a good way to test how good the armor is. And I didn't need it in this case, because uh, these guns are apparently decent enough against deep water guard targets to make a delicious, chunky mess out of them. I love shooting at the Atlas. It's not a good um, target because it's too squishy and explosive, but it is super fun uh, to make block confetti out of that thing. It's just really, really good. And this is me, World War II ship, kind of. <laughs> so yeah, that that there, there's the screenshot, and that does it for this Let's Build. Let me know if you want to see me finish this, because I want to see what I can possibly get away with and I want to see whether we can actually make this thing a decent starter craft or like secondary starter or something like that. It's probably not going to be super great because you know I don't want to go completely nuts and like I could just fill the thing with lambs and have it be like tanky I guess but I don't know. I don't know the whole point is that it's meant to be a torpedo boat and where the hell am I going to fit all the torpedoes? In the hull of course. Anyway uh, so, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Let's build. Farewell.